So you mentioned Brian Clough. One of his disciples is Martin O'Neill, who seems to bring those learnings from 30, 40 years ago with him into the current Republic of Ireland camp. The last two competitive games have been pretty much humiliation for Ireland against Wales and Denmark. They've Wales and Denmark coming up twice yeah. in the space of five days. Again, though, it's, it's sort of off-the-pitch conversations and little controversies bubbling under already again this week. We had James McLean out in front of the media. So Harry Arthur has returned. There were clearly air talks yeah. with Roy Keane. He's back, and it seems... All is rosy in the camp. Uh, James McLean comes out and says that, well, Arthur shouldn't have stayed away the last time, that, you know, you'd have to put well, a gun to my head to keep yeah. me away from playing Ireland. Yeah, well, that was his opinion, uh, you know. He, he, but what's happened, like, in the, in the comments that we've heard from, from McLean is that uh, Arthur was, has become out the bad, bad guy. He thinks he shouldn't have done it. Uh, he should have played. You know. But why has Roy Key come into it, Right. Arthur didn't start all this row. It was Roy Keane started the row, verbally abused him, and, and, and well, that's why he stayed out. Mm. So Arthur, all of a sudden now, uh, by McLean's comments, is the bad guy for not turning up. And why did he not turn up? That McLean, McLean, the way McLean is talking, well, you know, in my day, like, you, you had to take all the stick that you... OK, I, I came across that as well. But this wasn't a football matter that Arthur was... was uh, approach that was that he stayed away this was the assistant manager verbally abusing him does McLean not coming out though not suggest that actually the feeling within the squad is that what Roy Keane did or what Roy Keane said wasn't that bad that it shouldn't have been enough to force Harry Arthur out of the squad well, it, it doesn't matter what the others think it's Harry Arthur is the one that's to blame and what and I believe uh, the, the the comments that were supposed to have been made Nathan now you read them mm. as well uh, I mean, that, that, that nothing to do with football. Questioning like, his fitness. Well, he was questioning his character, anyways. You were always injured or whatever, and all your sons are this and your sons are that. And, and, and so what McLean is saying in his day, he came across coaches who, and the, the, the lads of today are a bit soft and that. But he, I, I think, don't think he had anybody, assistant manager, coming up to him and accusing him of being injured all the time and all the various things. It's, it's apples and oranges. Like, McLean is a good lad and I like, him, I like his attitude playing. He said he would wear the green shirt all the time. That, that's, that's his opinion. It doesn't mean he's right and Arthur's wrong. But what's come out of it, Arthur did nothing wrong as far as I could see uh, in, in this particular issue with, with, with the assistant manager except to say, look, I, I can't stand for that and I'm not going to turn up for the next match. So I think McLean is getting it mixed up. He would have turned up for the next match, but he didn't. Get, he wasn't at the end of the, the verbal abuse. Sure. He's talking about another, a different situation altogether. The other different situation was years ago. The coach would have said, "What do you think you're doing?" and give him a rollicking and all that. This wasn't a football matter that Arthur was objecting to. This was a personal matter that he felt was absolutely wrong, and it was bad behaviour from the assistant manager. Mm. That's been written out of it now, and I think it's wrong. I think it's it's, it's unfair on Arthur to be put in that position. And I think McLean should be a little bit more careful about what he says at times.